Hello and welcome to a new video about measurements. This time we are going to talk about a moving iron measurement. So we again want to measure some electrical quantity. And this time not with a moving coil measurement, but with a moving iron measurement. How this is working I want to explain briefly. Yeah, not in detail, but briefly. Well, we have base is again a winding, but this winding is now wrapped around some sort of tube. Here. And part of this tube is, is made of ferromagnetic material. Okay. So here this is ferromagnetic material. Yeah. This is a fixed iron. Mm -hmm. Wrapped around this tube, we have here, wrapped around this, a coil. I will try to show it somehow. I don't know how many windings. It's wrapped around this, this tube here. Yeah. Zack, zack, zack. Yeah. And then we are coming back here. Yeah. Here is the measurement current. Here is the measurement voltage. Yeah. Compared to a moving coil measurement system, these wires are rather, rather thick. And shorter. Okay, so this means the internal resistance of these wires is relatively small. What does it mean if an internal resistance is small? This measurement device is very suitable for ampere meter. Okay. Without extra at the beginning and so on, this is suitable for ampere meter. This is all fixed. The coil is fixed, everything is fixed. This is why I can use the thick wires and why I can apply uh, I can do it like it won't produce an ampere meter. Of course, I can use a thin wire, then I, then I can also adapt to a voltmeter. That's possible. And here in the middle, I have a special designed iron part looking like this. The H shaped. Yeah. There's a bearing. Yeah. And this thing here. This can rotate inside the tube. Yeah? So this is the moving iron. This is the thing which gives name. Yeah? This moving iron is held back by a spring. Okay? Okay? Spring loaded. It's pretty much the same as, as in the moving coil measurement. And there is the pointer pointing to somewhere. And here I have a scale. Of course I have a scale. And of course the pointer is moving. Now let's discuss why the pointer is moving. Here we have the scale. Those two parts, yeah, they are ferromagnetic material, iron. Yeah. These are these are magnetized. By the measurement current. How are they magnetized? In the same fashion, yeah. In the same 
fashion. This means whenever producing here North Pole, we will produce a North Pole on the fixed iron and the moving iron. Yeah? Those two North Poles are pushing themselves away. So, boo, they are distracted to each other. Yeah? So, there will be then a torque trying to move away this, this moving iron from the fixed iron because it's the same magnetic pole. Okay? Same poles. Movement of moving iron. Okay. So this means then the pointer, boop, 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 so there's some sort of torque applied, then the pointer will point in another direction. Simply the pointer is moving from here to here. Yeah. It's working against the spring. The spring will hold the pointer back and there will then be an, an where the forces are equal, the pointer will stand still. Okay. If I remove the current, the, the, the poles will be removed and the pointer will drop back to zero. Yeah, the force. applied is proportional to a the measurement current squared yeah? and so it's suitable for AC hello we can directly measure AC uh, AC alternating current uh, since you know if this is changing, plus and minus, also the poles will change, north, south, north, south, but it doesn't really matter. If a north pole is distracting a north pole, or the south pole is distracting a south pole, does not really matter. Yeah? They are distracting each other. If it's a sine AC, a sine wave AC, then this shows even the, the effective value of the sine wave. Okay? So, this is now for AC and DC, of course. So this is working well. So what what is the advantage now? Uh, advantages? I don't have any any. The, the moving part is rather simple. Yeah, so it's simple and robust. So it's relatively cheap, all right? And we can handle AC and DC. And we can also adapt the wire and so on. We can do ampermeter, we can do voltmeter. Great. Huh? This is actually the reason why a lot of these built-in cabinet, built-in measurement devices, they are moving iron measurements. Yeah? because they are simple, robust, cheap, and so on. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. What is the downside? Not linear. Yeah. Not linear. This means the scale has to be non-linear fashion. We are we are uh, proportional to I m squared, so this has to be some sort of squared, uh, depending a little bit on the magnetizing curve also from this material and so on. There is a lot of Noah's how inside, however, it's not linear. Okay? And not that accurate. If you want to have a precise, really precise measurement, moving coil measurement. If you have, if the, the, the accuracy of this is enough, you can look at the accuracy class. This is robust and so on. Okay, moving iron measurement. Yeah, these are the possibilities. Next time we are going to talk about multimeters. I will skip the traditional multimeters with the moving coil measurement. 
Ah, I think you can imagine how they are working. There is a lot of pre circuits with different pre uh, rectifiers and 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 resistor networks and so on to adapt to different different uh, voltage measurement ranges, current measurement ranges, and so on. Uh, however, this is not usually not the way how to measure today. Today we are going to measure with digital multimeters. Next time, I will show you what a digital multimeter is, how you handle it, and so on. Yeah? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.